Hello and welcome to another Bible study here with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. We are doing a revelation today on this video. It is October the 28th, 2024. And this will be a uh, Captain's Voice revelation in reference to other videos that we've done with the subject, Who Do You Serve? Okay, this is part four of that, Who Do You Serve? Where we're going to take a look at an example in the Word of God. Where the children of Israel entered into a land once again, and they began to serve those idols in that land, and then the repercussions of it from God, so that we can understand and see the significance of uh, what God is saying when he tells us he doesn't want us to serve any other God. Now, uh, before I go into that, I'm going to take us over into the book of Exodus, chapter 34 to read some scriptures that also go in alignment with this revelation. In this Exodus chapter 34, and beginning with the, uh, is it Exodus I want? Yeah, Exodus chapter 34, verse 10, he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people, and I will do marvels such as I have done before in the all the earth, nor in any nation, or such as not I have not done, I should say. He said he's going to do those uh, miracles and marvels that he's never done before in the earth for the children of Israel, and nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with you. So observe now that which I command you this day. Behold, I drive out before you. All these enemies, the Amorite, Canaanite, Hittite, Perizzite, Hivite, Zebusites, take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of you. Okay, and again, always noting that those idol gods are for a snare to place an individual once they've been converted into the kingdom, they begin to worship and to serve any other deity or any other uh, presence, force, that they were considered to be a god, sort of uh, in representation to God and what God provides, and him being also our creator, if an individual begins to serve in that order anything that is considered to be as such, then uh, they would be into idol worship, because that's what that would be. So then going on, he says... Um, Verse 12, take heed to thyself, okay, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, okay, that's the same verse I just read in reference to making a covenant, because you don't want to come into agreement, because once you come in agreement with, as he tells us, the inhabitants of the land, or if you come into agreement with that God, that idol in that land, okay, then you've stepped away, you stepped out of the will of God, you stepped away from the covering of God, and you stepped into the covering of that idol, and that land, and he says, uh, but you shall destroy all their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves, okay, now that's what he said to the children of Israel, they are to do in this new land that he's led them into, okay, after he destroys their enemies that are in that land, then the children of Israel were to go forward and to destroy the images and the altars that those people created with their idols, the type of gods they worshipped, because they didn't worship the Heavenly Father. And then he says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, who his name is jealous, he is a jealous God. And lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call you, and thou eat of his sacrifice, okay? And thou take of thy daughters unto thy sons and their daughters, go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods, okay? Because again, we know the story of Solomon, and how God had given Solomon so many different women, wives, and 700, I believe it was, and then God told him to not have relations or marry uh, outside of the kingdom, okay, but he wanted the Philistine wife, okay, 
he wanted to marry a Philistine, and he did. And as he did marry that Philistine, his Philistine wife, it was just as God told him. Once marrying the Philistine, because they worshipped idols, they didn't worship the Heavenly Father, they had a different God. And upon him uh, marrying into and then uh, being in relationship with the Philistine, it caused him to worship their gods. And that's what he began to do. And so that's why, uh, and as he did that, he began to walk in rebellion against God. And uh, that was a time and a period in Solomon's life where, you know, I don't think he would be, because of that action, he would be considered something else. Because at that moment in time, God had told him not to have relationship with the Philistine women and why he was not to do that. Because it would, they worshiped other gods and in him having a relationship with them would then persuade him into wanting to worship their God. And that's what happened to him. And then him and God became enemies. God pulled a part of the kingdom away from him. And uh, it was just a whole turnaround, a whole, uh, by him doing that, it rerouted the kingdom. Okay, so um, verse 17, he says, And thou shalt make to you no gods, okay, no molten gods. And the feast of unleavened bread shall thou keep. Seven days shall thou eat leavened bread, as I commanded you in the time of the month of Bib. For in the month of Bib thou camest out from Egypt. And all that opens thy matrix is mine. And every firstling among the cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. And all the firstborn, thy sons, thy Thou shalt redeem. And I'm not going to read no more further on there because the only thing we want to uh, pay close attention to was that, of course, what God said in reference to them not uh, worshiping any other God. So now we can go over to uh, the book of Judges where our actual revelation reading is coming from. Judges chapter 2. As again, we take a look at another example of the children of Israel beginning to worship idols and then God's reaction to that. And it begins with um, chapter 2, verse 1. The angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swore unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of the lands and you shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Okay. And again, that's what we read in Exodus. Once they get into the land, once the Heavenly Father removes their enemies in the land, they are to go forth and break down their enemies' altars because those enemies do not and did not serve God Almighty. So he says in verse 3, Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare to you. Okay, because they didn't throw down the altars, God is saying, I'm not going to drive these people out from before them at this particular moment in time. Because they began to break, they broke covenant and began to uh, worship the gods of the people. So therefore, God said, I'm, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides. And then verse four, he says, and it shall come to pass. When the angel of the Lord spoke these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and they began to cry, what was said. And they called uh, the name of the place Bochum, and, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua and the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnah, Neheris, in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gayash. And also all that generation were gathered in, unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Okay, so here's this new generation of people coming that didn't, of the children of Israel who didn't know the Lord, okay, 
and uh, they know his works, and uh, but they were the children of the children of Israel, their generation. Okay. And the, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. They began to serve the idol. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods. Of the gods of the people that were round about them, they bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. Now, those were the two gods that they were serving in that land, Baal and Ashtoreth, okay? And that's just to take note of the fact that, and you know, coming into any type of land, there are gods there, okay? There are gods arranged there. You know, it would be all the same as uh, an individual going into a country, going into a geographical, even in different geographical areas, there are gods that take over, especially if there's a, a god that is completely occupying that whole country, okay? But if there's several gods, sometimes there can be several gods in several, several different regions, areas of different countries unfortunately okay and um that's what we see taking place right here in this chapter that we're reading because they just said baal and Ashtoreth were the two gods two go idol gods worshiped in that particular area and the anger of the lord was hot against israel and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about them so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies and whatsoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord has said, and as the Lord has sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Why did they end up in that position? Because they forsook the Lord and served the two idols of the land once they entered into the land. After God had explained to them, as we've read and went over pretty much pre several times throughout this uh, our Bible study in the Old Testament, in reference to the children of Israel, they began to serve idols. And God had already forewarned them not to do that. But nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Once God decided to allow them to be uh, taken over and into captivity by their enemies, God then raised up judges this time to deliver them. And He yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods bowed themselves unto them, they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so, okay? Again, they still ignored the judges that God sent to deliver them, okay, to be a representation of them at that time and pull them out from under their enemies and to hopefully uh, help them to get back into alignment with God and not worshiping the idol gods that they were worshiping that caused them to be placed into captivity. And then the Lord says, when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Okay, and it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers and following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. And they seized not for their doings, nor from their uh, stubborn ways. They continued, it says, they continued on. Even after the judges, God released judges and he was with the judges to deliver them out of the enemy's hands that God had placed them into the enemy's hands for because they were uh, rebellious toward him. And then the judges died that had been uh, used to deliver them. The judges died, and then they went right back into their way of rebellion toward God. And it says here in verse 20, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people has transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Okay? So, you know, from them becoming rebellious and beginning to worship other gods, that took away their helping hand from God, okay? Their hand to remove their enemy, their hand to fight against their enemies because they had become one of their own enemies. When you take a look at this uh, in its depths and see, 
verse 22, he says that through them I may prove, I may test Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk in it as their fathers did keep or not. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out. He left them there hastily. Neither did he deliver them into the hand of Joshua. So there were some nations that were left there just in order to test the children of Israel to be sure that they would serve the Lord as God has had told them to do. And that all happened because of their initial rebellion in the beginning and not wanting to worship and to reverence God as the God that he introduced himself to be, showed his presence, showed his power, showed, uh, revealed to them how they were one in, one in each other Okay, because I'm sure God did, did that because he just he did and does that to us today. Confirms his presence in us. Confirms his presence around us. He confirms his presence for us. So he did the same thing for the children of Israel, but they ignored and began to serve the different idols that were in that land. And then uh, we read and see uh, what the repercussions was from it, from God. How he allowed them to be surrounded. Okay, and uh, by their enemies to test their own faith toward him. Are you going to still serve me or not? Because you weren't serving me is what he's saying. So now since you've decided that uh, you're not going to serve me again, I'm going to leave your enemies around you because eventually they will push them into serving God and reverence him. Reverencing him as he wants them to, just as he used King Neb he used King Nebuchadnezzar to do the same thing when they were in Jerusalem. All right, so that concludes the Revelation reading for Who Do You Serve, Part Four, as we take a look at idol worship and another story about the Word of God. All right, God bless you. God be with you, and I'll see you on our next Bible study.